the Honda Pilot has been transformed from a utilitarian box on wheels to this sleek and stylish near luxury utility vehicle. I'll admit, I didn't really like the way it looked when I first saw it about a month ago, but since then, it has really grown on me. Pairing this dramatic redesign with a long list of upgrades, is that enough to put the Pilot at the helm of the three row crossover segment? Remember when the boxy Ford Edge and the square Nissan Pathfinder got all sleek looking? Well, now it's the pilot's turn, and you know who to blame. How is this Obama's fault? Well, it all has to do with government mandated corporate average fuel economy standards. And what that means is that the feds are forcing automakers like Honda to produce increasingly more fuel efficient vehicles. So they have to eke out every last mile per gallon by making them more aerodynamic and sleek looking. So the good news is you get to reap the rewards with much more fuel efficient cars. Gone is the big boxy front grille, and it also looks longer and lower to the ground, and that's because it is. It's about an inch shorter overall, and it's three inches longer in length. But Honda has done so much more to make the Pilot a fuel economy leader. In addition to cutting almost 300 pounds of weight from the car, they've put in a new direct injection 3.5 liter V6 engine. And the good news is it's actually up 30 horsepower over the old model. The engine comes with cylinder deactivation and on higher trim models you actually get a start stop system that shuts off the engine when you come to a red light or a stop sign. I did find that in the city when you're using it, it takes about an extra half second for the vehicle to get going, which can be a little bit annoying. And just once in all the times I was driving it, it gave a jerky sensation when I left the line. Base models get a six speed automatic transmission that replaces the old five speed unit because you know, it's not 2001. And on top of that, the higher spec models get a new nine speed auto. And that's the one I've tested out today. And I have to say that it's quick shifting and smooth and I've got zero complaints. Regardless of which trim you pick, the Pilot is at the front of the pack when it comes to fuel economy, averaging anywhere from 21 to 23 miles per gallon. Driving the Pilot, you actually sit about an inch lower than you do in the old model, and the ground clearance is 7.3 inches. So that's a little bit better than, say, the Nissan Pathfinder, but it's not quite as good as the Toyota Highlander. What I'm most pleased to report is that the sound deadening improvements on this car actually made a real difference, and it's a much quieter cabin than the old vehicle. It feels noticeably quicker than the old model, and it actually feels pretty nimble too, although the suspension is set pretty soft, something you'd expect for a three row crossover. The 2016 Pilot gets an all new all wheel drive system that's essentially a hand me down version of Acura's super handling all wheel drive setup. It sends 100% of the power to the front wheels, but can send up to 70% to the rear when needed. And all of that can be sent to just one rear tire to help push you through a corner. If the weather or terrain conditions are less than ideal, Honda has put in place something to help you make the most of the new all-wheel drive system. They've bored a page from the leaders in the off-road segment with what they call an intelligent traction management button on the center console. And you can choose between different preset modes for the terrain. On all-wheel drive models, you can select from normal, mud, sand, and snow modes. With a family-focused vehicle like this, safety is always a priority. And Honda has included in the new Pilot what they call their Honda Sensing Package. Available on the EX and EXL, as well as standard on higher trim levels, it includes adaptive cruise control, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, as well as lane keeping assist and road departure warning, both of which work to keep you in your lane using first steering and if necessary, braking too. Also a part of the package is an auto brake feature that can slow or even stop the car on its own to prevent or reduce the severity of an impact. Oddly, a blind spot monitor is only on the top trim, though in its place, all models come standard with Honda's lane watch system that projects what's in your blind spot right on the display screen. For the first time ever, the Pilot does come with second row captain's chairs. Plus, there's a new easy access push button that actually flips the seat and makes access to the third row very easy. Now, that access space is actually two inches wider and one inch lower than before, although it could still be better in my opinion. Getting back to the truck size, the increase puts it near the front of the pack in cargo room, a category Honda almost always dominates in. 
from behind the steering wheel, the interior updates are just as dramatic as the exterior ones. Gone is the overly utilitarian design and it's replaced with something that's fresh and modern and on the top of the line trims like this one, it almost looks like a near luxury product. One of the first things I noticed are the new buttons on the center console for operating the transmission, a piece lifted almost directly from Acura. The dash itself looks much cleaner, though it kind of just seems like they moved all the buttons on the steering wheel. I mean, look at all of these. There's this big 8-inch touchscreen on all but the base models, and I like it for its looks. For basic operations, it's pretty good, but when you start sliding through different songs, it seems to be a bit slow to move. As well, I really don't like Honda's volume control slider. It's just annoying. A few important features to point out here, a push button ignition is now standard while keyless access and remote start come on all but that base model. Honda kept the massive center console area that can hold a whole purse and added USB plugs, lots of them. There are now five places to plug in. Unfortunately, just like with the Odyssey, you can only get a heated steering wheel on the very top trim. WTF Honda? That top level trim is called Elite and it is impressive. It includes a panoramic glass roof, heated and ventilated front seats, and heated second row captain's chairs, as well as LED headlights and the first use of 20 inch wheels on a Honda. In autoguide.com's three row crossover comparison last year, the Honda Pilot, the previous generation model, finished a dismal sixth place. It did the basics right, but in other areas it was simply outclassed. The 2016 model makes huge strides in the driving experience, interior safety and technology, while still managing to improve on already strong fundamentals like fuel economy, passenger and cargo room. So should you buy one? Well, for most cars we review, the answer is usually it depends. But for all those reasons I just mentioned, for the new Honda Pilot, the answer is a resounding yes.